Well, my fellow YouTubers, it's a brand new week, and in this review I'll be taking a look at a Mega Man game. Now, what could be better than a Mega Man game, you ask? Well, how about 10 Mega Man games for the price of one? Because that's exactly what you'll get with the Mega Man Anniversary Collection on the Nintendo GameCube. In the 21 years since his inception, the little robot that has come to be affectionately labelled the Blue Bomber has blasted his way through not just video games, but just about every form of merchandising known to man, from toys to clothes to music CDs, and even a hilariously cheesy and heavily Americanized animated series. But let's set the Wayback Machine for 1987 as Capcom, while recruiting talent for their latest project, hires a budding illustrator by the name of Keiji Inafune, and after completing his first assignment as a graphic designer, he's prompted to create a brand new character to capitalize on the fledgling NES, or Famicom as Japan calls it. After putting his talents to good use with the help of a small crew, Keiji's new creation, Rockman, is born. Come on. Before it was Rockman, it was originally going to be Mighty Kid, or Knuckle Kid, and this is how we were doing the package. So we decided on Rockman. And in the end, it did become the state's Mega Man. Actually, it's not a rock like a stone or a pebble. That was not where the name Rockman comes from. It comes from rock and roll. After catching on following a limited Japanese release, Capcom takes Rockman overseas, making a few minor changes and giving birth to the Mega Man that we know today. And this is where the fun begins. Despite its utterly horrid box art, the original Mega Man game became a sleeper hit and laid down the basics of the Mega Man franchise. By choosing one of the six selectable robot masters, all of which were stolen from Mega Man's creator Dr. Light and reprogrammed by the devious Dr. Wily, players are given a dose of freedom that was quite lacking in most games of the era. Once you've selected your chosen foe, you then trudge your way through stages that are as lavishly designed as an 8-bit system would allow, avoiding all manner of tricks and traps by jumping with the B button and shooting down all the bad guys that get in your way with the A button, although I should note that the functions of these buttons were reversed in the original NES version. Reaching the end of each stage will, of course, pit you against the aforementioned Robot Masters as you fight to defeat them and rack up some points. Experimentation is a key factor here, as the Master weapons integrate a rock, paper, scissors type of functionality in the sense that each robot has their own specific weakness. Another notable feature that would continue through all future sequels is the ability to steal a Robot Master's weapon and use it for your own desires. You can cycle through the Master weapons using the two shoulder buttons, and each one is particularly helpful in getting past any obstacles that are thrown at you. For example, by equipping Iceman's Ice Slasher, you can freeze these flaming pillars and save yourself from some major burnage. When all six maniacal machines are taken out, it's your duty to bring Dr. Wily to justice. Traversing through his fortress is no easy feat, however, and further hindering your progress are the gigantic Yellow Devil and even a Mega Clone. Following the wild success of the first installment, Capcom manages to top themselves with the release of Mega Man 2, which, in addition to introducing Mega Man's classic theme song to the world, sees Dr. Wily constructing his own set of eight robot masters to obliterate Mega Man and take over the world. Now, aside from the obvious improvements to the graphics and soundtrack, one thing you may notice is that many of the basic enemies have a more cutesy look to them. This was in part due to Capcom allowing children to design their own enemies and send the drawings to Capcom. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, because it helps create the idea that this sequel was made by kids, for kids. The levels themselves are a little more colourful and wacky, with Quick Man's stage easily being one of the most frustrating levels in the entire game thanks to a mid-level laser ambush. This game also incorporates the use of traveling items like a rocket board, which would be expanded upon in Mega Man 3. Released in 1993, Mega Man 3's plot sees Dr. Wily apparently giving up his evil ways and joining forces with Dr. Light to create the peacekeeping robot Gamma. But has Wily really turned over a new leaf, or is there more than meets the eye? Further changes include the introduction of Mega Man's supporting cast, including his sister Roll, his transforming K9 sidekick Rush, and the mysterious Proto Man, known here as Breakman. This is also the first game to pitch you against Dockbots, machines created by Dr. Wily to crush Mega Man by way of the powers of previous robot masters. Finally, Mega Man can now slide along the ground by pressing down and B, which is useful for avoiding incoming projectiles and ducking under small crevices to snatch that all-important power-up. The following year, Nintendo released their Super Nintendo console, but rather than make the leap over to 16 bits, Capcom continued to travel the already beaten path. Mega Man 4 pits the Blue Bomber against a new nemesis in the form of the Russian Dr. Cossack, who's created his own robot masters and invited Mega Man to test his limits against them. 
New additions to your arsenal include a grappling hook, a balloon dispenser, and the brand spanking new Mega Buster, which can be charged up to release more powerful shots. Mega Man 4 is also notable for revealing the entire origin of Mega Man in its opening cutscene, simultaneously disregarding the original English game's civilian name of Mega in favor of Mega Man's true civilian name, Rock.